Hi everyone and welcome back to Planting for Wildlife. I'm camped down at the bottom of the garden again, trying to get out of the wind. Hopefully it's not too noisy on the camera. This week I'm looking at sowing perennials from seed. It's the perfect time of year to be sowing perennials as long as you have a sunny windowsill or somewhere indoors to put them. Planting from seed has so many benefits. It's lower in cost, meaning you can get a lot of plants for your money, but also reduces the carbon footprint of putting plants in your garden, reducing the amount of big bulky plants that have to be transported around by road. I've had some mixed success with sowing from seed, if I'm completely honest. Some plants have been absolutely great and they tend to be the plants that I'm now filling my garden with. Some haven't germinated at all. So I have my top three for you that will play beautifully into any perennial wildlife friendly scheme. The first plant is the cardoon, such a great structural plant to add to any border. It gets quite tall to around two and a half meters, so it can really act as a nice anchor for other smaller perennials around it. In summer, it has these huge flower heads, almost prehistoric looking, which the bees love. And the foliage is this deep cut silvery leaf, which stays really nicely throughout the summer into winter and also adds good ground cover for animals. In terms of sowing, I had a really good success rate with the last batch I did. Once they were potted on, I paid them absolutely no attention at all and they grew really well. They're now in the bed with nice free draining soil in a sunny spot, so they should be nice and happy. In terms of wildlife value, the flowers are really popular with the bees in the summer. And once they do go over, the huge seed heads can be eaten by garden birds such as finches. If there is any of the fluffy down left on the seed head, that's also used for nesting by some birds too. Next up, I have an echinacea, or coneflower, with a beautiful name, white swan. Last year, I planted two different types of echinacea. One was called palida, which is a beautiful pink variety with soft petals that hang down from the seed head. The other one was white swan. White swan germinated so much better, and once potted on, grew really strongly and created a huge amount of flowers. The flowers of an echinacea are actually made up of loads of tiny flowers, and they're really popular with butterflies, bees, and other pollinators. Similarly to the cardoon, once the flowers have gone over, the seed heads are eaten by garden birds, such as finches. The white petals with an orange center make it a really easy plant to combine with other color combinations in the garden. I'm combining it with Russian sage in my main perennial border, which is a plant I featured in my winter shrubs part two video. It also goes really nicely with the next plant on my list, Verbena venariensis. Verbena is such an effective plant for any garden. Structurally, I think its best characteristic is that it adds the height and color, but it also has that transparent form so you can see through it to the plants behind. It also works really nicely just planted on its own. And one of the nicest examples I've seen of verbena planting was actually at RHS Garden Wisley in the UK, where it was paired with just one other grass, Steeper Gigantia. The golden kind of oak-like seeds of the Steeper Gigantia gelled really well with the purple verbena. It was a really nice planting scheme that actually covered a huge area. There's not that many perennial plants, I think, that you can just fill a space in and still create a lot of interest with it. I'm really excited about having all three of these plants in my garden this year. Hopefully by summer, I'm surrounded with these plants, humming with bees, knowing that I've grown them all from seed, which is a really good feeling. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, enjoy the wildlife in your garden.